over the next four days, I want to cover four elements of storytelling. Uh, there are a lot of people out there, great innovators and experts on the art of storytelling uh, for business purposes. Uh, one that I follow, and who's, who's actually a mentor of mine, I've been uh, kind of working with him for two or three years now is Michael Haig. Michael was involved in, in the world of movies for 30 years, 30, 40 years uh, out in Hollywood. He was a script consultant for some, some major studios and major actors. What I learned from Michael is that there are four key elements to stories. And, and the first one that we'll cover today, and I want to make sure I get this right, follow the pain. What does that mean? If you think about a lot of stories that you hear, uh, you may hear about somebody who's kind of struggled, went through a tough time, but most of the time the storytellers will focus on the great life that they have today. And they don't really delve deep into the difficult part. Well, the reason this is not effective is because you don't make an emo emotional connection telling somebody how great your life is today. Now, you want to, at some point in the story, give the end result so people see that, yes, there is hope uh, coming from your story. But if you want to connect with people at a deep level in your stories, and this includes business stories, follow the pain. And that means go back to the origin of where your difficulty started. Quick example for you. I've told this story often to my uh, audiences and my, my clients is the reason I am in speaking today. I'm a speaking and storytelling coach, speaker, and author is because of an incident that happened 25 years ago when I was sitting in my boss's office. We were doing a review of some financial workshops I'd done. I was a CFP at the time. And I thought this was going to go well. I'm sitting in the chair waiting for him to sit down. And I'm thinking, man, this was so good. I, I, I know I really nailed that last one. I gave so much good information. I had great PowerPoints. The audience loved me. Oh, I just know this is going to be a good review. And my manager sat down and said, Michael, this is not good. And I said, what do you mean, Joe? He said, this is just some, a sample of what people are writing about you in these evaluations. Too much information, uh, could not take notes, guy talked too fast, feel like I got hit by a fire hose, and he went on and on and on, and there was nothing good in these evaluations. I had clearly given way too much information too fast, and I, I was just like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> I finally stopped him, and I said, Joe, is there anything good in there? He said, yeah, oh, there's one. Hold on, let me find it. And he went through some pages and said, yeah, here it is. Mike has nice hair. I said, that's it? He said, yeah, that's it. Wow. That was a real slap in the face. And he looked at me and said, Michael, you know, we hired you. We, we brought you on here because you said you could handle this. You could do these workshops and get new clients in the door. This type of evaluation, this is not acceptable. You either need to fix this or else. Well, I was pretty worried about my job at that point. I went back to my office. I was just stunned. And after sitting in my chair for a few minutes thinking, what am I going to do? I picked up the phone, made some phone calls, and eventually a friend recommended I go to a group called Toastmasters. At Toastmasters, I learned that speaking is a learnable skill like every other skill. It's not something you're born with, contrary to popular belief. And I became more immersed in the topic. I learned that I love to speak and I love to coach others. So that's, that is a, a story, a pain point that sent me in a whole new direction. Sitting in my boss's office, getting this awful evaluations, you know, having my bubble burst to find out that you know, I wasn't as good as I thought. That's following the pain. So when you share your stories about why does you do what you do or a difficulty you've had, go back to that origin. Let the, the audience hear how you were struggling, how emotionally this was a difficult time for you, and you'll create a deeper connection. Tomorrow you'll hear about part two of the formula of how to create and deliver stories that have a meaningful impact on your audience and your prospective customers. See you then.